Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. Mish Mosh Monday. We got a lot going on today. I'm really looking forward to today's episode. It should be a lot of fun. So uh, let's get right into it. The first thing I want to talk about is a, a good friend of mine, uh, CP the Tool Addict, another creator here on YouTube. Uh, he does uh, a ton of tool reviews. He's a, a mechanic. And uh, just a nice guy. One of those guys, he looks he looks like a kid, but he's actually an adult. And uh, anyway, um, he did a uh, notification the other day about uh, a company that's going out of business. And uh, it's the Malco Eagle Grip uh, division of Malco. And what that was, I did a review on it um, not too long ago. These Malco Ego Grip pliers, what it was, was we all know the uh, locking pliers, the Peterson, the Vice Grips, went out of business years ago. and uh, But the factory, I believe, was still there. Uh, Malco bought the factory, brought back the original guys, and they, their plan was to make the best locking pliers available in the USA. And this was 2017 when the administration was... Uh, keen into keeping businesses here in the United States. So they were doing well. They did well until obviously, uh, you know, things have changed and it's, uh, and, and now it's a little bit harder. So they're, they're closing. They put out a, a notification that they're closing their doors and uh, they'll no longer be able to, uh, to produce these uh, locking pliers. Now the Malco Eagle grips are without a doubt uh, some of the nicest locking pliers you'll ever see. They took the, they were the same ones as the Peterson brand, the originals, but they even, the fit and finish is even better than them. Um, so the problem is that they can't compete. And I wanted to have this discussion because I said, this is, a, you know, something we all talk about, about, you know, tool companies leaving the U S and something. And, you know, sometimes when you're, when you produce expensive tools, for example, like uh, Ghidorah or Kinepex or any of the foreign, you know, the German brands, when you produce expensive tools or Snap-on, you know, it's very difficult uh, to, uh, to to compete when when you have companies like in Taiwan. Taiwan's putting out such good stuff at, at a good price and even some factories in China. See, the problem with China is it's a 50-50, you know, whether or not you're going to get a decent uh, part or, you know, they, they, they skip a lot of, of steps in China and that it shows like, for example, if you have to chrome plate something, you're supposed to copper plate the item first and, or nickel plate and then chrome plate or whatever. It's, it's a, uh, a series of play. And you know, a lot of times with China, it might look good. And then six months down, it starts flaking off. You don't know what you get. And that's the problem with Chinese. You can't trust any of the stuff coming out of there. You cannot trust it. Taiwan, you could, and Japan, you could trust everything. They they will not uh, put out stuff that's junk. But anyway, uh, how do you compete? So let's talk about that today. Now I have a pair of of Malco uh, of the Eagle grips. Uh, I bought the seven inch. This is my favorite size, the seven inch with the curved jaw. And I bought these, this pair of vice grip when I was a young man. I never, I'll never forget. I paid good money for this. I remember paying more. But this is one of the best tools I've ever owned. This thing is just indestructible. It saved me a hundred times. This is the 10 inch version of that. And again, I do like the curved jaws. I have a bunch of different ones, as you know, they clean up nice. This is the USA style that were made in the Nebraska plant. Uh, the Malcos are fit and finish far and above this. But the problem is at $50 a pair, it's you can't compare the two. It's not you're not comparing apples and apples now. You're comparing a fifty dollar tool that's that's above and beyond the price of you know. So how do you compete? Yes, it's it's better fit and finish. Will it do the job much? But this kind of tool, you know, you a lot of times you you don't see a lot of professionals using these all the time. Uh, it's uh, homeowners use them kind of more than professionals do. But uh, I wanted to show. The, uh, some of the tools that you can pick up at such a decent price and, and maybe we can have this discussion. Now, after watching uh, CP's video, I said, you know something? I said, let me order a pair of these special type of pliers just to give you an example of why it's so hard to compete 
with overseas products, especially if they're decent. And this here I ordered, uh, I've ordered this, and this is exactly the way it came in the box, right? So it's not in an envelope, but it came in a box, nothing as that you would wind up saving in a plastic bag. And this is a brand, Denali, made in China, obviously, right? Let's take a look at the fit and finish here, okay? It's nowhere near a Malco, but you know something? It's not bad. It, and I actually like this jaw design. Now, this jaw design here, this is a, a different one than the normal vice grips you might see. But you can see here, you could grip pipe. You see how these jaws curve down. Uh, vice grip makes a very similar one. This is the vice grip one. Now, this particular pliers cost $22 for the vice grip, okay? Again, $22 is shipped. It's not bad. And again, it has great, you know, nice teeth on there and, you know, nice jaw design. You can see how that works. Again, a locking plier opens up to grab a big pipe, whatever you have to. I believe everybody should have a, a pair of this type of plier. This one here, slightly different jaw size. See how this one opens up, you see? And it does open pretty wide, you can see here. Um, and a little bit different jaw. I like it. It's a great jaw for clamping because it's got that curve down here. But guess how much this one cost shipped to my house in one day? Are you ready? Are you sitting down for this? $8.25 shipped to my house. Now, how <clears throat> can you compete with something like that? And if you're going to compete, you can't be charging $50 for a pair. You know, I could see if you're charging $25 for a pair. If they could make this and ship it to my house for $8.25, you're going to have to either do something or, or whatever to get the price down. You can't be charging $50 for a pair of pliers because there's not many people that are going to have that kind of cash unless you're a professional you know or something like that but homeowners you're going to say you know what i'll give this a shot especially it's not even like it's a night and day product i can understand look there are some uh, products coming out of china and stuff that is just such junk that you wouldn't even you know say forget about it these i i i challenge anybody to say i'm, I'm going to put this i'm going to show you i'm going to clamp it down on a few things this is for $8.20. How do they even ship it? I can't go to my post office and ship something from the post office to my house for less than 10 bucks in a package. How did how is Amazon making a profit on this? How is China? <laughs> I know we're not getting into the whole what they, you know, the labor practices or whatever, but do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand why? It's very difficult to compete in, in today's market. And if you are, and this has been, this isn't new. This is years ago. You look at any old tool manufacturers. They're always, we're talking about price and quality. You know, there was always competitive. So I'm just saying that, you know, nobody wants to see Malco. Those are great pliers, but they weren't in the same. When you can buy this for $8, how am I going to spend $50 for a, uh, a pair? Let me show you how these work, by the way. Okay, let's say I, I wanted to clamp these two unusual pieces together like this, you know. I could take this like this one-handed. Get over here like this, squeeze it down, and that is as solid as it's going to get. There's no wobble, no shake. I mean, that is solid. And look at the jaws are, uh, you see the way that the curve on there locks in against the jaws? I like that. These are really, I suggest, I suggest, and I don't usually do this, you know, I suggest you go out and buy a pair of those before they go up to $20. Every time we do this right on the channel, they wind up going to be more expensive. I'm going to show you here with the uh, with the other the other style vice grip here. This is the vice grip brand. Locking it in. Again, nice, nicely made. I like this jaw style. And you can see it locks down, you know. So there's a multitude of uses for this. And if you wanted to grab a a round pipe like i said a round piece now this again is a 10 inch uh the vice grip is a 12 inch so you're going to have a little bit of a difference here but let me show you grabbing something round here i have a small piece of uh, pipe here and we're going to put it in here like this you can see it lock up and you can get a good grip on there but i want you to notice where the teeth grab around the pipe okay it's not perfect but it will allow you to grip something of an unusual shape like that uh, the vice grip, I believe, does a little bit better job because they have a slightly bigger curve. Let me put it in here, clamp it down, show you what I'm talking about. You see that? So you have a little bit better grip on there. Um, 
I, I personally, like I said, I like these. And one other thing I want to say, chrome vanadium. Chrome vanadium, again, $8.25 shipped overnight to my house. I can't understand it. Okay, so uh, as you can see, you know, you know we're not tool snobs over here at the channel. You know, <laughs> this channel, we're not tool snobs. If something is decent and it, it will give you service, I will let you know. I think it's, I like it. I think you can't go wrong for that price. What do you think? What's your thoughts on that? Um, next up, I know, you know, a couple people are talking about they enjoy the locks. I just want to show you a, a combination lock from Master. I thought you might find pretty interesting. Okay, as you know, I'm a uh, padlock collector and I have a, a, a quite a bit, quite a nice collection. And uh, one of the collections I collect, and I try and keep it down to one brand. I, I personally like Master and there's a bunch of reasons for it, but... Um, what we want to talk about now is the combination lock. I'm sure you're all familiar with it. You, if you went to school, you, a lot of us had to have these at school. They would only allow you to buy certain types. Uh, some of them had a key in the back of the lock so that the school could get into your locker. Uh, just to put out a disclaimer, these type of combination locks are considered nuisance locks, okay? They're not high security locks. They're meant for a, a type, you know, to, like if you go to school or something, you know, you're not protecting valuables, you're protecting books, to keep people out of your locker. And that's what they were. And they were priced accordingly. So anytime you see somebody trying to compare this to a lock that costs five times as much, they're out of their mind. You're not comparing the same things. These were $3, $4 locks that everybody bought once a year. You chuck them at the end of the year, whatever. And you know, they were just to, meant to keep honest people out like any other lock does. So um, these here, it's, an, it's amazing because these, the best-selling locks of all time, I mean, millions of these were sold and, and made. And years ago, here's a new old stock one. They came in a nice box here. And when you opened up the box, and again, you could see here they were made Milwaukee, Wisconsin, right? Nice, nice box. You open it up and what you got... And they came in different color combinations. You got a nice little lock. And over here, you had your combination along with the serial number. You can see here uh, the serial number, the code number. Uh, it, you know, everything was on the lock here. So it told you how to open it. Now, to open these locks, and you can see here it's 16, 22, 16. So basically what you would do is you bring the lock around to 16. Then you would pass 22 once, go to 22 and then back to 16, and then this would open up. You can see how easy it opens, and they, again, these were kind of bulletproof. They they were well-made locks, but you can, again, they were nuisance locks. You could bang them open. You could hit them with a hammer or whatever. They weren't meant for high security. They uh, master made a, a bunch of different locks here. Like, for example, here, this one's meant <laughs> for the hard of seeing, like me, where you can actually see the numbers without... And it had a rubber dial on here. Again, this would be like for an elementary school or a grammar school or something. And you can see here, uh, it's only rated as a three on the security. So it's it's definitely a, a nuisance lock. It's not meant for secure. But it, how cool is that with the, you know, the little uh, plastic magnifying on there so you can see the numbers easily. And also has detents. You can hear it. So it would lock into the number. Um Again, I find this stuff all very interesting. But one lock that I got that's a, a vintage lock, discontinued, but this was a higher security lock. Let me show now, you again, this. Again, this is a newer style box compared to the older style. You could see here, and they went to a, uh, you know, a one color box instead of a three color. And you can see here now, assembled in Mexico. Again, as you go, as years go by, you could see how they're trying to cut costs and cut corners and things like that. And uh, but you can see here it's assembled in Mexico. But again, the components were made in the USA. Uh, this one here, it's a higher security. It's about two to three times the weight uh, of these locks. And you see the size difference. OK, now this is a higher security lock. Again, it's not nothing like a, that you would guard, you know, your valuable super valuables with. But it's much more secure and thicker and heavier duty, the shackle thickness, than this one here. This is like a school lock. But what's interesting is how this opens, okay? Now, let me show you the interesting. A lot of people couldn't even open this, even if you knew the combination. I'm going to show you what the combination is here. Okay, you see it's 31531. Can you see that? That's the combination. So what you do is you turn this all the way. 
you go to 31, right? Like there. Then you pass 5 and you go to 5. And then you go back to 31, right? Now, that should pop right open, correct? It doesn't. What you have to do is once you hit that last number, you have to turn this. It'll only turn a short way, and that will spring open the lock. You know what I mean? Uh, so unless you turn it back, you can't open it. Now, what's other interesting is that when you close this, it'll spin the dials in there. Watch the face when I close this now. Ready? You see how it spun? It spun all the... Uh, the the uh, plates in there so that nobody can just get the last digit and open it up. It was a higher security lock. Again, heavier duty, heavier duty, not, not something that can't be busted with a sledgehammer, but very interesting. So if you ever come across one of these locks and you try the regular combination and you wonder why it won't open, you have to It'll spring back and that'll open it up. Okay, in closing, I'm sorry it was uh, we ran a little bit long. I was a little bit chatty today. We'll catch you again on Wednesday. And thanks so much for tuning in. Take care now. Bye-bye.